These are some of the latest videos in 2022 made by one of the most successful media creators in recent history. If you take these videos and start counting the, counting the number of cuts per minute, an interesting pattern emerges. The x-axis shows time going up by minute-long increments, while the y-axis shows the total number of cuts. On its own, it might be a bit difficult to put in perspective, but when shown along with some older videos by the same channel years ago, and as well as some newer successful and fast-growing channels, the developments become clearer. Oh, shit. What it shows is that successful videos are faster than they've ever been before, and why this is has a short answer and a long answer. The short answer is that our attention spans are fried, monkey-like action and quick stuff. That's the end of the video. The long answer, though, requires you to answer a question. How do you build a decentralized video platform that maximizes exposure to the highest quality videos possible, while also following a few rules? The monkey you're targeting has limited time in their day. The bottleneck is demand for content, not the supply of it. The monkey has subjective tastes, one monkey's trash is another monkey's treasure. And the monkey needs to make your platform money. Covering the last one is, relatively speaking, simple. Just let ads ride the ship of a video for a price. More people make videos that people watch, more money you make. Figuring out the other two is more difficult because it involves something we call quality, which can be quite obscure, and it can also be controversial to say you're the one that's able to identify it. On this platform though, the proxy for quality is engagement, or more specifically, retention. How much of the viewer's time is spent watching a video? A higher number on average, a more successful video. And intuitively, this seems reasonable. Yeah, that's a that's a thing I notice in my own analytics. That's the thing you notice in, in TikTok analytics as well. We would do analysis videos of popular TikToks, and every single time the view the watch time was above 50%. Um, like the average watch time was about 50%, TikToks would go viral. It would be like a big creator would post TikTok. The consistent views, the views were consistently something in between 50,000 to 150,000 consistently. And it was like every single video, 60,000, 80,000, 110, 75,000. Like it was always scattered around there if you just made normal videos. Um, and, and, and then there would be a separate set of videos, which would all be... 2 million to 5 million. The, all the views were like that. There was very few videos that this guy had that had 1 million views, very few. Um, and so, and it would always pop off like super quickly. It would always get like a million in the first day, you know? It was like a ridiculously high amount of views. And they were always like that. It was always, a video was like a flop or insanely viral. There was never like, ah, oh, video is good enough, you know? And um, uh, what's it called? We look at the stats, every single video that had a lower, um, that had the lower, was in that set of lower view videos was always something with watch time percentage of like 44% or 48% or something like that. And anytime it was ever 51% or more, like 51 to 55%, which is like the most we can manage for those videos, it was always one of those viral videos every single time. A good book is one you can't put down. And a good speaker is one who can carry the audience through a story without breaking their focus. This video was made possible by NordVPN. Nord That's the thing. I know this. I know this. I knew when I was editing the videos that I edited, I knew I'm including clips from before, before I get to the actual point of the video, because I want full context and I want the video to be a, a more rewarding thing to the people who, who stick and watch, stick to and watch the whole thing. But I knew it wasn't going to get as many views. I look at the retention rate like 12% even though it's still, it's actually my most successful video because I knew it was gonna be a successful video regardless. Who knows how many views it would have gotten um, if I was actually just like straight to it, you know? Nord is the VPN I personally used for multiple years. And it definitely crossed my mind to just sit here and talk about why you think your VPN ads your dark. Follow the link. What you're watching for looking at now is a retention curve for a YouTube video. The higher the amount of people watching for longer, the higher the likelihood your video will be recommended to users. Now, there are a dozen other factors determining a video's success, like the relevance of the content for that specific person or the success of the video's marketing. But after someone has carefully engineered a picture that will make you click on the video, the race for retention begins. 
the producer hopes that the viewer goes as far as they can. It's another funnel. It's another funnel. Because a loss of focus is a loss for them. Every moment is a funnel. But this is every how the cut, every cut, every edit, every word you say is a funnel that some people will drop off on. Well, emerges. When a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. The most successful videos are no longer the most aesthetic, instructive, and reflective, but the most attention grabbing. But maybe we shouldn't be too hasty. Critiquing the attention spans of newer generations is an old tactic, and it's always been more convenient for me to say that my essay, filled with incomprehensible jargon and breaking at the seams with tomes of moral superiority, is actually incredibly high quality, but it's those other lowbrow content producers that are the reason for why no one reads it. So the real concern is not that engagement shouldn't belong in our calculations of quality, but it's that empty engagement calories can exhaust our ability to pay attention, creating a positive feedback loop which ends up breaking the correlation between retention and quality. Of course, some researchers have grumpily criticized this connection to begin with. The convincing counterpoint goes that it may not be the internet that causes the reduction in attention spans. It's just that those who choose the internet over reading in a cafe, for example, may have a reduced attention span to begin with. Mm. But there are others that say not so fast. Probably both. One study looked at tweets, and they found that over time, popular hashtags have grabbed the public conscience for less and less time which would seem to indicate that the public's attention on specific issues are more likely to fade now, years after we become used to the internet, than it would have faded when society was just starting to get adjusted to it. And this observation applies across platforms, bursts in attention with quicker falls thereafter. But maybe you've already started getting impatient with me, thinking, man, I don't need a study to validate that my attention is getting fried, I've already started looking at the comments while you're talking. I am the proof. So let's do something a bit more engaging. Think of it as a game. Again, you have contestants that are competing for viewers because attention is scarce. And also again, the contestants know that retention is one of the largest factors that will guarantee their success. If you were playing, what would be the strategy you'd use to win? Think about a movie you saw in the cinema that you loved. You maybe heard about a release date and you started to get excited. You intentionally catered your experience just for the moment that you began watching. You sat down and you soaked in everything that you'd been waiting for. It was well-paced, exciting, and it carried you. Just one temporary, beautiful moment of awareness in that overstimulated monkey brain of yours. In this and then we have what you're on now, where the quantity is without limits, and if you watch vertically, you already have other stimulus calling for you to go deeper. And that brings us back to the game. We have millions of players, and they compete for limited space on that square. Now, maybe you could optimize for the slow burn and the feeling of wonderment that a movie like the one you love provides. And maybe for some, it could be a successful strategy. But you could also decide to optimize purely for the metric the game is about. Maybe your video was slow, and you see that the biggest drop-off was after one long shot. So next time a long piece of footage comes around, you cut it, so that people can get a little jab and reminder to keep their eyes on the video. Your retention goes up, so the video earns its space on the square, and space on the square means a higher likelihood to capture attention. But remember, or better yet, just forget. There are others in this game, and they begin to see what you're doing too, and they see that speed is an answer, and so the spiral begins each video nudging the number of cuts further and further. And before you know it, what would have seemed a bit much five years ago has suddenly become the norm. Evolution by attention selection, survival of the clippiest. Now dramatics aside, I wanna also be clear that I am not above attention grabbing. I'm still someone that uses video views as a form of validation for the fact that I didn't pursue engineering or something. And I hook viewers in by coming close to the side of unnecessary provocation <coughs> of probably one of the best media philanthropists on the planet. And I am also someone that decides to lean heavily on visuals, in many cases at the cost of fully fleshed out scripts, because it's more likely to keep people watching, and lets me get away with telling you what you already know. Monkeys like 3D animation, so this monkey will make more 3D animation. So please, take what I say with a grain of salt. I can be wrong, and I will be wrong. And I wouldn't take anyone that takes themselves too seriously, seriously. I like that. Can't take anyone who takes themselves too seriously, too seriously.
Too much content to watch. You know what? I saw the animations of this and I'm like, God damn, this it's is very beautiful. Useful. I don't even know how the hell they animated this. They must have used like Python or something because there's no way like an animation software can actually like, maybe it can, but like this is ridiculous. Like, come on, how are you, how are you getting the math of all of this down right? You know, like, bro. Analytically, you've there, there has to be their bounding box, which is useful in a lot of optimization problems. Such there has to be like other other things to it, other than just like After Effects or whatever. This can't just be done in After Effects. There's no way. But um, yeah, enough of that for now. Enough. My attention sucks. Time to uh, time to move on. I got things to do. Things to do that require my attention. So yeah, that's the end of the stream. Okay, bye guys.